Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for Tuesday, July 2nd. We are now through the second uh, trading day of the month, and uh, so far, I think price is kind of living up to uh, the seasonality so far. So far, right? It's only the second trading day of the month, but um, you know, it's been quieter, obviously, lesser volume in a holiday week, but um, it just feels like there's there's a um, there's a little bit of a grind going on in the market. So um, risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only. First things always that I always do in these videos is talk about, you know, what where the indices are, whether they're showing uh, some strength, weakness, whether they're at resistance, um, you know, what's going on with them. And then, of course, um, what I'll do is I'll look at some sectors, which you can kind of see, like you already can kind of formulate a little bit of a, um, an opinion. Uh, there was more things that went up today. If you remember from yesterday's video, um, there was more red, like on the bottom, this, like from this down, well, maybe I'm being a Maybe I'm being dramatic, but this far down, I think, was showing more red, and there's only a few green areas. So, um, you know, a little bit better uh, today in terms of participation, um, but ultimately, you know, some things just continue to trend and, and look pretty good. Before I get into any of that and, and going over uh, some charts, I just wanted to bring this up to you as I... Um, mentioned it yesterday too is that um we are running a um a second half of the year special um so here it is right and um you know here's just a quick summary i'm just going to run through this really quickly with you but um it, you know i think this is a great opportunity and it's we're doing this at a very cheap price it's five hundred dollars for six months right and you get the combination like we're, so we bundled two things together so you get two things for basically more than the price of one because this, this is cheap um, but you get the the um, the trading uh, system that I use which is based on volume at price right it's another level like you know so if you've heard of anchor VWAP or if you use volume profile this is taking it to the next level right it's it's much more um, it's fairly easy to use it's not subjective like anchor VWAPs are right there you don't you don't have to you don't have to pick and choose where you anchor something right you've got something that will also tell you where there's overhead supply it says this version point of controls and um you know it's it's a pretty darn good system and you get six months to basically try it out and i would say like it's better than trying it out for like a week or two because i think you need a little bit more time to kind of grasp different concepts so you get six months of that and you get the trading room where you could basically like you know ask questions um, a lot of the members of Tribeca Trade Group use the market webs, so you, you can kind of get a feel for that, right? And then, of course, you get things like every day I do daily market commentary. I do a weekend video, weekend watch list, which I'll show you how that's performing um, and how that works. I use Bloomberg API, so it's marked to market all, all the uh, all time. Same thing with my open positions, which you do see when I send out a midday note. Um, I send out charts on every new position that I get into. So you get the rationale be behind why I'm going into a swing trade and, you know, upside targets or support stop levels, all of that. And um, that also goes into our open reviews. And we also get the TTD trend portfolio, which is a longer term strategy with, um, you know, trend, about 50 names. I operate it basically like, like an ETF. So that all comes included. I think that's a pretty darn good deal for $500 for six months. You can just go to this link right here. I will retweet this after the video so that you can find it um, a little bit easier. But this was tweeted. You could just go along my timeline two days ago. So that said, let's get into the price action. And um, Hughes led, I mean, this has kind of been a little bit of a pattern, right? And by the way, like, so if you want to see like what's been going on, like I love this little feature that you can do in terms of looking at for relationships, right? You just put one over the other, right? So this is Q's over SPY, right? You can see how this has been outperforming now for a while and helps, I think, to even see on the weekly chart, right? This is just how much strength the Q's have, right? And this is basically, so this is the beginning of the year where I've got the cursor here. This is all year long that the queues have been really outperforming. When is that going to stop? You know, when is the, when is this outperforming the queues relationship going to stop? I can't tell you. It's a trend, and you know the the trend. No one knows how long a trend is going to last. Right now, it's just really trending. And then the other one that's really alarming is when you look at the queues in IWM, right? That has really been uh, you know pushing higher. So that's where the strength is. And um, now let's just break it down by some individual. Um, stock charts. So first of all, let's move back to the daily chart. One of the things I, I want to just put in your 
perspective, right? And this, you know, you know, talking about when the market got overbought, which is which was in the middle of June, right? And then since since and the RSI got super overbought, about an eighty, right? And we know that with indices different than single stocks, indices don't stay that overbought for long, and then they usually burn off those overbought levels. Well, that's basically been going on for the last couple of weeks, and I think that overall that's that's not a bad thing. You know, that's not a weak market. It's a fact, you know, going higher, getting overbought, and consolidating those gains without a major pullback, I think is is pretty pretty darn bullish. And um, so we're trying, we're starting to try to resolve higher, right? And again, I look for clues on the one hour chart, right? And we did make it through the value area. Uh, remember last Friday we got rejected um, right at that breakout point. And that's, you know, due to portfolio rebalancing, which, which was heavy for sale on Friday. So I don't know. I don't think I think we're out of the woods in terms of all those rebalances. And the market looks like it wants to push higher. Um, the cues, as, as I've already mentioned, are showing that relative outperformance. Right. And um, they're right at the top of value for the month. Right. So, again, one of the things I mentioned is like, hey, maybe maybe price needs to wait for this 20 day moving average to catch up. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Right. Nothing, you know, it doesn't work that way in terms of, oh, well, this would make sense. So this is going to happen. Market will do whatever it wants to do. And, you know, as always, you have to be prepared for that. But kind of the same thing. This got super overbought. It was at 82 RSI when it was here, consolidated, you know, and now trying to resume the uptrend. Watch uh, this 487.16. Right. And this did get through. I was tweet. I tweeted this out a, a couple of times today, which was the one hour value area because we got pretty rejected this is where we closed yesterday and then we kind of sold off during the after and you know during the um after hours so that wouldn't be a bad thing again scenario analysis number one we could continue to go higher in the after in the after hours or we could kind of break down a little bit like we did yesterday in the after hours and even if we pushed back and retested that um, i think that's a pretty good setup too to have in mind all right um bonds right we talk about you know how um, rates have been moving higher. You had a little bit of a move back today in bonds. You know, not retracing too much of the move, but if you go back to the spreadsheet, you can see that bonds were up almost one percent for the day. Now again, it doesn't. It's, it's kind of a blip on the screen because um, you know this has been selling off pretty decently um, over the last couple of days. So even though that's a, normally a decent move. Um, <clears throat> the selling pressure has been much, uh, much bigger the last couple of days. All right. So um, that's kind of just a quick review. The dollar was down a little bit. The VIX was VIX is all the way down to like, the, uh, you know, almost the 11 handle at this point, which is pretty crazy to me. Small caps did OK, but underperformed, um, you know, and then, of course, we, we look at what performed well today. Um, look at the semis. They were the they were the biggest. Um, uh, area that went up after the after the open today. So they rallied the most out of any group that I've got on my spreadsheet from the open. Now, of course, consumer discretionary did better than that um, because Tesla's in there and Tesla did a lot of the um, uh, rallied pre-market pretty decently. So up 2%. So these areas, let's take a look at them. Now, when you look at XLY, you have to remember that you've got two large, two big companies that are uh, responsible for a good portion of the um, of the game of the performance in this, and that's that's Amazon, which I think is around twenty three percent, and then you've got Tesla, which I think is around thirteen or fifteen percent of the ETF. So you put those two together, and that's about forty percent of your ETF. And um, consumer discretionary is trying to break out now. It would be nice if some other names um, kind of joined in this. Um, here's what the performance was for today. All right, uh, let's bring up, let's bring up this. All right, obviously you've got Tesla, which was up 10%. You got a couple other names in there. Um, Etsy, Orly was up today. Airbnb was up. GPC, you had some, you had some strength in some auto names today. Um, interesting, you know, not just Tesla and uh, Rivian, which had good gains, but um, a couple of the auto parts uh, group was particularly strong uh, today too. But um, of course, that was strong. You can see Amazon is is uh, about ninth down in terms of that. So let's talk about those two names first. And I spent a lot of time in yesterday's video talking about Tesla. Um, 
I was, uh, so obviously a big day today, like up 10%. And this is the weekly chart. We're making our way through the valuary for the year. Um, bullish 80% rule. So ultimately, I'm looking for a move up to 275. I know it's difficult to read on your screen, but it is 275. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it gets there in a straight line, but I also thought it might, you know, we might see some type of a check back if the numbers, the delivery numbers were lighter than expected, but they weren't. And this, you know, uh, raged. So I still have a position on. I didn't get to add. I didn't add any more to it, uh, which I would have liked to. I, I was all set after those delivery numbers if they were lighter to do to do that. But um, hey, this is super strong. So congrats. To, I want to say congrats to the Tesla Longs. You know, here is the signal, in my opinion, using volume at price, right? And this is the market webs telling you what's relevant here. And there was no question. I mean, look at the difference in volume too, as this broke into the value area, right? Very, very strong and has as, uh, as kept on going there for Tesla. Um, also, uh, I just wanted to bring up Rivian as well. Um, you know, Rivian had this big move, right? When they announced that they, that uh, Volkswagen um, had a, has a deal with them. Um, so they kind of sat back a little bit. They sold off, hit this virgin point of control. So overhead supply, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, right? We knew where exactly where that was, um, but the pullback wasn't, wasn't that um, deep, right? We kind of just came back to this moving average and, um, you know, we're right around 15 bucks. And I like this chart. Um, you know, I think you have to be patient, but I think um, overall, I, I think it's shaping up, right? And here's what this looks like on the longer term, right? So break into the value area as well um, for the year on that weekly chart. Um, Amazon, what can you say? So here's the thing, you know, I, I, I know, and I've been complaining about this too, right? When we look at market breadth for the day, these are four week new highs. These are 52 week highs. Now the S&P is still making, there's still more 52 week highs, right? So that's good, right? But when we look at four week highs, which is, you know, one month new highs, right? You're still getting a lot more new lows. There's 19% of the index today made a new low, to a new four-week low versus only 8% made a new high today. So, um, you know, there's there are a lot more names, you know, that are, um, that that have been going down. Now, you know, so why is, why does the market keep going higher when you've got more names in the index making new lows? Well, because it's names like Amazon that are making a new high. It's got your bigger names are acting wonderfully um, right now. Uh, there are shallow pullbacks, they're trending, right? And that's kind of what you want to see. So, it, so it's a little bit of, it's like a tale of two different markets going on. You've got weakness under, you know, under the hood, but the, but the leaders are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're leading, right? And I don't think that there's, a, there's, there's, it's tough to complain about that. Your bigger companies are leading, right? So the, and again, they're the, they're the top weights in the ETFs for a reason, right? Because they're they're the largest companies. How do you get to be a large company? Well, because you have you get to be a leader, and um, so it, I, I you know it's really tough to complain about that. Google, remember, had that downgrade last week, um, is over that and is now almost back to new highs. That was a dip to another dip to be bought. Microsoft is out to new highs, right? And um, um not Rivian, but NVIDIA is still kind of, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Um, it's just kind of digesting, right? Again, it made such a monster move. It's letting people kind of forget about it a little bit, right? And then then it will probably, um, um, then it will be, uh, you know, probably get more interest. But for now, it's um, it's in a digestion uh, time frame. But there's other names that are acting pretty well. Broadcom right has started to move up the last couple of days that looks pretty positive texas instruments right this is a name that um, i got long today um, i really like the consolidation right again nothing wrong with this really strong move on earnings um, really really rallied went sideways for a bit you know, about a month shaking people out here and there and um, and look at the move today right, outside of a very thin value area. So this is the equivalent, you know, a lot of people talk about when there's like coiling with the moving averages, when three moving averages are wrapped around one another, usually a big move ends up happening, right? Same thing here when you've got a very slim value area. Usually um, there's tight price action and usually there could be a decent move out of that. Um, another one that I find interesting is this AMSC, 
right? Ver another very strong semiconductor. Digestion, digestion, digest digestion, down to the 20-day moving average um, with the five-day moving average kind of crunching in here together. And um, look at the squeeze out of that, right? And um, also staying inside the valuary for the month of July, which is important, right? That shows some strength too, right? So I I, I have to say, I, I like this name as well, right? And there's a number of other um, semiconductors that acted well today too, right? Here's what the whole ETF looks like. Uh, whoops, that's the wrong, that's a typo. It's not what it looks like, but again, I, I don't, you know, this started it tried to go on friday but there was just too much too much selling pressure with the uh with the pension fund selling and portfolio rebalancing and all of that but um this looks pretty the you know this looks pretty darn good and a nice green bar as i mentioned it was one of the best performing groups from the open today also look at this group right what's this group doing in here the banks so um if you watched yesterday's video i went through about four or five sectors that are all going sideways right i talked about like xlv right which is healthcare there's a lot of these sectors <laughs> that are just like i don't want to call them dead money but they're kind of like for now they've been dead money for like the last 3 or 4 months they're not doing anything right we talked about industrials too at least industrials came back a little bit but i don't view this as a very constructive looking chart i view it's hanging on for dear life right here but look at the financials right nice green bar today um you know maybe this is the the start of a move if you go through some of the components look at um jp morgan has been a rocket ship since they announced um you know the the capital uh, structure stuff, the um, buyback for next year, as well as increase of the dividend. Very strong. Bank of America had a nice day today. Again, sorry, that's the wrong symbol. Still the wrong symbol. There we go. Um, I'm having a issue with my keyboard. Um, <laughs> so so the, the letter B doesn't come in. I have to hammer the B key to get that to go, but that's a whole nother situation. Bank of America, nice breakout. Let's see how it handles that uh, virgin point of control. Um, I remain long Goldman. Um, Goldman is uh, a little bit slower. Remember, like uh, it held that 50 day like a champ um, about a week ago. And uh, since then has been uh, has been moving higher. Morgan Stanley, another one, um, also constructive. Citigroup looking pretty decent there as well. All right, so not bad. Um, another one that's not exactly, a, it's not a bank, it's exchange stock, ice, 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 ice baby, um, breaking out to new highs. This is an exchange stock, um, very nice. And again, like this is this is not a bad looking pattern, right? Kind of an inverted head and shoulder, big inverted head, head and shoulders look, maybe trying to break that neckline and um, and push higher. Um, I mentioned the, the watch list, right? So um, you could see quite a bit of names that were green on our list. Um, look at ARM today, actually had a, had a good day. I did not catch that one today. Can't be in every trade, have to pick and choose, but um, still acting pretty well. Found support at around the 20-day moving average and uh, had a real nice day today. Um, Kava uh, was up a little bit. Um, Broadcom, which we already went over. Um, a few other names, new names, Core Z. Um, this is more of a momentum name. I tweeted this name out. Let's see if it can really blast off here. Some of these names have been doing that. Watch this 1018 level. Again, smaller cap, higher momentum type name. Um, ASPN is a name I'm watching. I put on the watch list, right? Even though the home builders have been horrible, right? This is this is a name that's been going in the the like a building construction name, right? They do like installation and things like that, right? I know kind of boring, but um, I would watch uh, this level for tomorrow. See if it could turn the corner here. Twenty four nineteen. Um, why am I looking at this name? Because it had really good earnings, right? For a while, it just kept on going higher and higher. Once it broke, it didn't hold its twenty day moving average. It broke down, but it's worth kind of keeping a couple different names on your watch list, in my opinion. All right, Costco had a nice day today. How could it be? Uh, you know. It would be un-American, in my opinion, if Costco did not go up around, uh, you know, the 4th of July. Speaking of the 4th of July, I'm going to cut the video off a little bit earlier today. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, have a great 4th of July. Reminder, tomorrow is a half a day. I'll be working a couple hours tomorrow, and that's it. But um, I just want to wish everybody a, a happy and safe 4th of July. And then, of course, markets are open again on Friday, uh, where we've got the monthly jobs report. Have a great night, everybody.